Welcome to this session on monitoring Amazon RDS custom for Oracle deployments. In this session, we will discuss about using a custom solution, which will enable you to create and monitor Amazon RDS custom for Oracle using CloudWatch metrics, and eventually set up CloudWatch alarms. My name is Arnab Saha, and I am a database specialist partner solutions architect here at AWS. As a part of my role, I work very closely with the SI and the ISV partners to enable them on AWS database services. Along with me is my co-presenter, Radhika Chakravarti. Radhika, would you like to introduce yourself? Thank you, Arnab. I'm excited to be presenting this custom monitoring solution that you can start using today to monitor your RDS custom for Oracle database instances. I'm Radhika Chakravarti, a database specialist partner solutions architect here at AWS. I work primarily with independent software vendors to strategize their migrations from on-premises or EC2 databases over to the AWS cloud to RDS managed database services and also help them to modernize their database landscape. With that, let's get started. On the agenda, I'm going to quickly recap what is RDS custom for Oracle and a couple of use cases that this service caters to. Thereafter, I'll discuss about the solution overview, which will enable monitoring RDS custom for Oracle using CloudWatch matrix and go over the actual CloudWatch matrix that will be auto created as part of the solution. Thereafter, Anna will discuss about the custom scripts that we developed, scheme through the high level implementation steps, and then walk us through a quick demo to show how exactly this tool can be downloaded installed and implemented in your environment. We have a lot to cover, so let's dive right in. There are a broad range of use cases that RDS Custom can be used for, and I have classified them into four major categories. RDS Custom for Oracle supports packaged business applications like eBusiness Suite, PeopleSoft, and other applications that needs elevated privileges to the database or operating system. Sometimes, if customers are looking for specific database features like database fault or flashback, which are currently not supported in RDS Oracle, then for those use cases, RDS Custom for Oracle is a good option. And also, customers can install any specific drivers in the database host if they're using RDS Oracle Custom. RDS Custom also supports applications that customers might be interested in lift and shift into AWS as is or with little to no application changes. Customers can use native migration tools like RMAN or DataGuard to migrate to RDS Custom for Oracle and minimize migration downtime. Customers can also set up disaster recovery database in AWS using disaster recovery as a data guard standby while their primary is still in on-premises environment in RDS custom for Oracle. Amazon RDS custom is a managed database service for commercial database engines like Oracle and SQL Server. This service automates the database administration tasks and operation while making it possible for a database administrator to access and customize the database environment and operating system. With RDS Custom, customers can customize to meet the requirements of legacy, custom, and packaged applications. RDS Custom brings the benefit of managed service by giving the customers a managed experience in terms of automating provisioning, backup, point-in-time recovery, automation, and so on. It also gives the customers the flexibility to bring their own media and patches and apply those one-off patches at a pace that they really want. There are many options to run your Oracle databases in AWS. You can choose to run them on EC2, which is a self-managed option, or use RDS Oracle, which is a fully managed database service where AWS takes care of the undifferentiated heavy lifting for you, like patching, scaling, backup, high availability, and so on, so that you and your team can focus on business and application level tasks, which makes you stand out amongst your competitors. Now, you have another option to run your Oracle databases in RDS, where RDS Custom fits in. As you can see on the screen, RDS Custom is placed in between running your databases on EC2 and RDS. 
for your workloads, our first recommendation is to go with RDS if you're looking for a fully managed database experience. In this offering, the entire database and operating system is fully managed by AWS. However, our customer said that they had applications which needs admin rights to the database or the underlying operating system. And at the same time, they still wanted a managed database experience. For such use cases, RDS Custom is an ideal choice. With RDS Custom, customers retain full access to the resource and make any changes or customizations that could interfere with our ability to provide seamless automation. Therefore, to combat this challenge, there are additional guardrails in built within RDS Custom to support this automation. With RDS Custom, there comes a shared responsibility for tasks like backups and patching between the customers and RDS. With Amazon RDS Custom for Oracle, you can now customize your database server host and operating system and apply special patches or change database software settings to support third-party applications that require privileged access. This is the solution overview. As we know, in RDS Custom for Oracle, we have access to the underlying host. And as part of this solution, we are gathering the host level matrix using a script and then publishing it to a custom namespace in Amazon CloudWatch. At the same time, we have another script that is gathering data from the seeded namespaces, which are the EC2 and EBS namespaces. So our script retrieves raw data from the EC2 and EBS namespaces, manipulates the data, like converting those raw data in a one minute granularity, converging all the underlying four volumes together, and then doing the math so that you can see the average data in one minute granularity as you're used to seeing in any other RDS databases. Ultimately, the scripts are collecting data from both the avenues, publishing them in CloudWatch dashboard. Once the data is available in the CloudWatch dashboard, you can then see all the matrix in there. You can also set up CloudWatch alarms and thereafter use AWS SNS to send a notification if you exceed any alarm threshold. All of these works seamlessly. We have an installer script which will install everything for you. And once you open the CloudWatch dashboard, you would be able to see all the graphs. Let's take a look at the list of matrix that would be published in CloudWatch dashboard for you. Under infrastructure matrix, you can monitor free storage space matrix. In RDS custom for Oracle instances, we have three kinds of volumes. One is the root volume, which has the operating system installed on it. The bin volume, which stores the database binary like the Oracle home and data volumes, which stores the data files, control files, redo log files and others. The point is, if any one of these volumes fill up, then your RDS custom for Oracle instance would go into a storage full state. Therefore, as part of this solution, we have included individual monitoring matrix for each of the three kind of volumes. Other than free storage space, you can also monitor CPU utilization as well as freeable memory. You can also monitor load average matrix, which will give you an idea of the average load on the underlying server. We have also included a matrix for the process tracker, Oracle PMON process. The script will always check if the Oracle PMON process is up and if the PMON process is live, it will report one or if the process is down, it will report zero. So you can now create an alarm around this and get notified if the PMON process is reporting zero, indicating an unplanned outage. From the workload matrix perspective, we have included read and write IOPS as well as read and write throughput so that you can monitor how your workload is performing. Under workload matrix, you can also see database connections. For this particular matrix, we are collecting the data from the Oracle listener port 1521, which is the default port. However, if you are using a different port, you have the option of changing the port number in the scripts. 
From a performance matrix perspective, we have included average read and write latency matrix as well as the average Q length matrix. Next, Anup will discuss about the high level implementation steps for the solution and show us a quick demo. Thank you, Radhika. Now, let me discuss about uh, the three main script that we have as a part of this solution. So, you need to download the three files from the GitHub repository and you can put them in a directory. The first file is custom metric.sh. The script will collect the memory, the TCP connections at the Oracle listener port and the free space and they will publish them into the CloudWatch namespace. The next one is the dash.json. Uh, this is the dashboard configuration file. It will fetch the raw data from the AWS EC2 and the AWS EBS and the custom namespace and it will perform some mathematical calculation to display all the metrics on the CloudWatch dashboard. The last one is installer.sh. This is a shell script and as the name implies, it will automate the entire installation process. So you will run this script and it will ask for four volume IDs of the RDS instance, the EC2 instance ID, the preferred name for the RDS CloudWatch dashboard and the custom CloudWatch namespace. The script will update the EC2 instance ID and the volume ID in the shell script and the dashboard configuration file. It will install the shell script in crontab and it will create the dashboard in Amazon CloudWatch. Please note, the custom metric.sh shell script is setting up in crontab to run at every 60 second and this script will use the put metric data AWS CLI command to send the data to CloudWatch. Let's take a look at the high level step uh, for the installation process. The first step, you need to set up a RDS custom for Oracle environment. Next, you need to identify the volume IDs and the EC2 instance ID. You can download the tool from the GitHub repository. You will use the installer file to deploy the solution. Usually it takes a few seconds for the installation to be completed. You can go over to the CloudWatch dashboard to look at all the metrics collected as a part of this solution. And based on some predetermined threshold, you can set up alarms on the CloudWatch metrics. Now let's go ahead and take a look where I will install this monitoring solution for your RDS custom for Oracle environments. This is the GitHub repository that contains all the codes, the shell script and the dashboard configuration file. The readme also talk about the metrics collected by this tool, the infrastructure metric, the workload metrics and the performance metric. Next, it also talks about the prerequisite which is required, which is an Amazon RDS custom Oracle instance. Next, you can follow the principle of list privilege and you can add a custom policy that will include the minimum permissions required for the working of this tool. I will move on to the IAM console and I am using this particular user and I have attached this particular policy as a permission. When I expand the policy, you can see these are the minimum permission that I need for the working of this tool. This is the RDS custom for Oracle environment I will use for the demo. I can go to click on configuration to identify the resource ID. Next, I will go to the EC2 instance console. This is the EC2 instance which is hosting the Amazon RDS custom for Oracle environment. Storage tab you will be able to see all the six volumes which are attached to this environment. Out of this six volume, the one volume is the root volume that is containing the operating system. One is the binary volume that is hosting the Oracle database binary and the rest four are the data volumes. First, you can use this command to identify or validate the IAM user having the minimum permission to install this solution. Once you confirm, you have the same IAM user that you created as a prerequisite step. As a pre-work, I have already downloaded and placed all three files in the server. Next, I will change the installer.sh file as an executable. The next step is to run the installer.sh file. Now, once you run this, it will ask you for the volume IDs corresponding to the data volume of the RDS custom environment. Now, once you complete giving the volume ID of the four volumes, it will request for the EC2 instance ID. Next, it will prompt you to input the name of the custom CloudWatch dashboard. 
Next, it will prompt you for the custom namespace for propagating the host level metrics. Last, it will prompt you to confirm the region name of the RDS database instance. Next, hit enter. The installation is completed and you can see it takes a few seconds for the installation to finish. Now once you see the message installation successful, you can log into Amazon AWS console and you can go to CloudWatch to check the newly installed dashboard. Log into AWS console and go to CloudWatch. On the left hand side, click on dashboard. Once you click on the dashboard, it will show you all the metrics to the RDS custom for Oracle environment. You can see the infrastructure metrics where we are listing the CPU, the memory utilization, the free space for the data volume, the binary volume and the root volume, the load average of the server and if the Oracle PMON process is available or not. As a part of the workload metrics, we are displaying the IOPS throughput, the database connections and the IO size. We are also showing the performance metric and we have the read and the write latencies, the queue length. Additionally, you can also go to CloudWatch and you can click on all metrics and you will be able to see all the custom namespaces. As a part of the demo, I have created this new custom namespace over here. When I click on it, I will be able to see all the instance level seven metrics that I am gathering as a part of this monitoring solution. If you want to create any alarms on any of the CloudWatch metrics, you can use the CLI command that we have already discussed in our GitHub repository. You can also see the custom range over here. You can select it in the minutes, hours, days and weeks. Or also you have the ability to select the absolute time frame to choose a specific set of dates to check the metrics of this RDS custom for Oracle environment. Now this concludes my demonstration and I hope you find this helpful. Here is the link of the GitHub repository for this RDS custom for Oracle monitoring tool. You can also find the same link in the description section of this video. This brings us to the end of this video today. Just to summarize our learnings, we learned about RDS custom for Oracle as a service, discussed about the use cases where this service is a perfect solution, talked about the monitoring solution, which will help you to monitor your RDS custom for Oracle database environments and showed you the exact step-by-step -step implementation process for this monitoring solution. With that, we are at the end of the presentation. I hope you guys enjoyed this session. From all of us here at AWS, happy cloud computing.